We're here in Monte Carlo for the Rendezvous de September. For AM Best TV, I'm Richard Banks. And I'm joined now by Andy Moore, who's the London market leader at PwC. Andy, welcome. Hi, Richard. Good to see Great you to again. Be here. Thanks. So, the London market has a reputation for innovation. To what extent is the reinsurance industry using the hard market to develop new solutions? You're right, the London market has been a home for innovation, and we've seen that all the way through history. So if you go back through to you know the first motor car insured, you go through satellites, aviation, and onward to you know recent times where we've seen those developments in cyber insurance, which has really been led from the London market. But that's really insurance solutions. So we haven't actually seen huge innovation in reinsurance for some time. The main innovation we've seen in reinsurance has been the changes in capital provision. So ILS funds coming over the last 20 years growing, but that's been about different ways of sourcing capital in. If you look at the solutions that reinsurance has continued to provide, they've predominantly stayed quite similar. But if you like, they've had to be supportive of the underlying insurance products. So the innovation is there in capital provision, but not really in products that we've seen yet. And I think that's an area where there is still room for the market to develop. So talking about, about capital provision, there's been a, a sense over the past few years perhaps that uh, alternative capital has become more of a partner to reinsurance. Has reinsurers changed their, um, their risk appetite? Are we going to see a return to that competition between the two? It will be interesting to see. I think you're absolutely right that they have very much operated more in tandem over the last few years where ILS first emerged trying to, if you like, eat reinsurers lunch. It's been much more the case that there's been enough business in the market for them both to sit alongside one another. There was some question over the last couple of years as reinsurance capacity was squeezed as to whether or not that would create some form of competition. We haven't really seen that. And in fact, we haven't seen the competition driving down prices at this stage either, which would suggest they are sitting more happily alongside one another. Perhaps as the market may shift over the next year or so, we could see increased competition because fundamentally they are still looking at trying to you know, protect the same coverages, looking after the same balance sheets. So I would expect more competition to re-emerge as competition generally changes and prices start to soften. And to what extent will that be driven by investor appetite and investor sentiment? I, I think completely. Um, we see quite a different pool of investors generally in ILS than we do in traditional reinsurers. Um, typically they've seen to be shorter term, but actually because they've liked the returns they've got, they, they've stayed, but we see much more private equity, sovereign wealth, uh, pension funds coming into ILS as they see it as a diversifying asset against some of the other uh, exposures that they have. Um, but you know, I think it is a different investor base, but when returns are good, all investors will be looking to invest in the market, right? So. Yeah. Well, we're here in the in the midst of the hurricane season. Monte Carlo always takes place in the, the kind of the middle of the hurricane season. It's predicted to be a little bit more intense, a little bit more active than usual. We haven't seen that yet. But in the event of a capital depleting loss, what sort of investor sentiment is there for, for getting involved back in the reinsurance market? Uh, I, I think it depends exactly what type of loss. But with traditional losses, there's always been sentiment available to come back in because the view is that prices will increase and we'll see, therefore, more favourable future returns. That has shifted a little. I mean, there was a lot of challenges with trapped capital in ILS over the last few years. So those kind of investors did feel perhaps it took a little longer to get their money than they may have done before. But in every crisis that we've seen before, capital has re-emerged as long as pricing has got to a position whereby they believe there's going to be that strong return. I'd expect the same to happen in these circumstances. If the, if the, if the underlying investors and the capital can see the returns on offer, then it will emerge. So we were already in a hard market, but we've not seen the sort of startups that we've seen at this stage of a hard cycle before. Now, why is that? And I guess, more importantly, what are the consequences of that? It's, it's a question that I've asked, and I've had several different answers, and uh, I don't necessarily know that anybody knows the full answer. I think we have seen a big increase in ILS capital. You can see that in the total numbers. It's at record levels now, over 100 billion globally. Uh, but we haven't seen any notable traditional startup. And I think the big challenge there is that it, it just takes an awful lot of money to set one up at a meaningful scale. It's sort of at a level that very few people are willing to collect that amount of money, raise that much money, and put into a vehicle. 
And I, I think that's one of the predominant points. There is also the underlying investor sentiment that maybe they're waiting to see whether these returns last. Uh, traditional reinsurance investors were not satisfied with the returns they were getting over the sort of the last sort of seven or eight years. The last two years have been a lot better. But maybe they're waiting for a, a more consistent demonstration of profitability before they look uh, to, to set up. But if you find out the answer, then I'll be very interested. <laughs> well, of course, there are also alternative opportunities for ambitious young underwriters who perhaps would be the, the guys who'd be going out there trying to raise the money. Yeah. Look, I, I think you're right, and there's been a, a real change in the market around that. Lots of different ways that people have moved into MGAs and other sources of distribution. So there have been other ways that people have managed to keep themselves interested rather than perhaps some of the quite hard work that it might take to set up a, you know, a meaningful-sized reinsurance company. Andy, it's great to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for your time. Thanks for having me, Richard. For MBEST TV, I'm Richard Banks.